What if I told you that I learned everything that I know now from learning how to hack websites? I understand this probably looks and sounds quite clickbaity, but it's actually true. And we're actually gonna to talk to you about hacking websites and what you can learn from it. But first, I have to let you know, I do not condone in any way the hacking of any websites in any malicious manner. The whole purpose of us talking about this today is so that you can learn more and understand more about the side of the industry in regards to ethical hacking, which is why we cover these topics. Because you, as an ethical hacker or just somebody who is enthusiastic and interested in cybersecurity, you need to know how the bad actors or bad hackers are maliciously targeting websites, hacking their websites, and thus learn how to protect these websites so the hackers can't get in, right? Now, the whole reason why I'm jokingly saying that we're going to hack websites is because if you're not aware, a few months ago, the Missouri governor accused a reporter of hacking their website because the reporter viewed the source of their website and found information that shouldn't have been visible. For you to understand why this is even more hilarious to me, over 20 years ago, this is how I learned how to build websites. This is how I learned HTML. Yes, I picked up a book called HTML for Dummies, which was extremely valuable to me, but viewing the source of other people's websites was how I learned how to do new and cool things. Way back in the day, websites weren't as convoluted as they are today, not nearly. It was basically just pure HTML on a page. The point is I could view a source of somebody's website and I could copy that code and I could paste that onto my own website and it would be Identical. Of course, if I copied the images over as well, which back in the day, of course, we didn't really use that many images, but I could look at that code and I could understand and see everything that they were doing, every single thing that was being used. It was so incredibly easy to read through and understand. So I could take little bits and pieces of code that somebody else used and implement that on my own page or manipulate that in my own way. And that experience that I just shared with you, that is the essence of learning, taking something apart and understanding what the different bits and pieces do. And that's one thing that hackers love to do. They love to look at things and see, how can I break this? How can I make this do something that it's not supposed to do? How can I manipulate this? So viewing the source is by no means hacking a website. However, viewing the source of a website can give you the information that you would need to indeed hack their website. Now to kind of put this into perspective for you from the beginning, I got explicit permission from Heath Adams to hack our website, the TCM security website. We're not hacking it, we're just gonna view the source. Again, this isn't hacking. All you need to do is go to the web page, right click on it and do view page source. Now, if you use another browser, it's going to be very similar. I know, remember back in the day, in the menu bar of Internet Explorer, you would just simply click on view and then it would be source. That's just like ingrained in my memory forever. Anyway, what we see here on the page now is essentially the back end of the website. This contains all of the code that really makes the website visually displayed for you. To maybe make you understand a little bit about what I'm saying, we're gonna take this menu right here. All of this code right here is actually the menu that's displayed on the website. And we know this because if I scroll over here, we can see here, this is a title, it says about, this href equals, uh, this is actually the URL to the about page, and then we have about displayed. So I know just from understanding HTML that this is a link. This is the about link. And if I look down, the next one is our services, certifications, academy, merch, blog, contact us. Now, if I wanted to see this on the website itself, I can go back to the main page and now we see home, about, our services, certification, academy, merch, blog, contact us. So this right here is the code that makes this menu right here displayed. And if we look at this text, it's in white. And when we hover over it, it goes to like that pinkish color. So if we go to the source, let's use this about link as an example. This uses class uh, nav dash link. So this actually is tied to the CSS that this page uses. So we could actually scroll back up and we could start looking for all of the different CSS files that are used. And we could do this very easily by just doing control F and typing in dot CSS. And we could see that there's 23 different CSS files being called. Now, if we took the time to go through each of those CSS files, we would find something in there called nav dash link. And that actually contains kind of the code behind how that text is displayed. So under class nav link, 
it would actually show, hey, display this text as white. And when you hover over it, display it as that pinkish color. That's kind of what we can gather from this information here. So all of this information that we see here on the back end is in some way tied to one another. It's tied to something. Something happens from this code that we can see here. Now we can't see everything, but as a hacker, you could go in here and you could say, okay, well, they're using the Google API for something. I know that they're using this Rocket CDN for hosting their images. If we look at the ID on some of these style sheets, we see Elementor, which is a WordPress theme. So we could go through this entire page and find more information about how this website is built, about the different tools that are used, about the different scripts that are being used. And then we can start diving deeper into these things and see if there's any information that we can find. Which again, this kind of relates to what happened in Missouri, where the reporter looked at the source of a website and they found information that shouldn't have been displayed, but it was it was there for everybody to see. So it doesn't always happen where you can simply view the source and get information that you're not supposed to see. Sometimes you're simply viewing the source to gain more information about that website like those tools that are being used. So as you saw from viewing the source of the website, I was able to gain information about what was being used. And that's simply because I've been doing this for a long time. So if you're looking to get into this, as time goes on, you'll understand what links look like. You'll understand the different plugins that are being used or different WordPress themes just based on the name because you see it repetitively over and over and over again. But there's this website that exists called builtwith.com. And this is a tool that basically does the same thing for you, except it makes makes everything very easy to read. So you could go here and say, oh, well, TCM security uses HubSpot and they use Google like we talked about. Here's WordPress information. We knew that TCM security uses WordPress and there's Elementor, which that is the theme for WordPress. And we can go through here and we could see a lot of information about the website simply by viewing the source of the website. If you were a malicious hacker, you would take all of this information and you would search the web to see if there are any exploits out there that exist for any of these plugins that are being used or any of these WordPress themes that are used out there. That's very important information for a malicious hacker to know. And it's very easy to go out and look and see if anything exists. Now, web application penetration testing, bug bounty, things like that, those are very difficult to do. I'm not by saying by any means that simply going out to builtwith.com or viewing the source of a website is going to immediately make you a hacker. There's so many more things to know and understand before you can even dive into what it actually takes to view the source of a website and then learn how to hack it from there. To learn more about web application penetration testing or bug bounty, a great resource to start off with is the OWASP top 10. Now this covers the top 10 web application vulnerabilities that you can find out there on the internet. Each year they put out a list of the most frequently used attacks that are out there. And it's really helpful for you to kind of understand what these attacks are, and then you can kind of learn more about them. And there's so many great resources out there that can show you how to actually learn these different exploits in the OWASP top 10. Great resources starting with YouTube. I'll put links in the description out there. And I'll also put in the description other links to resources to help you learn more about the OWASP top 10. Now, I personally think the Practical Ethical Hacking course is a great place to start off with. Heath does an amazing job of laying down the foundations of the OWASP top 10 here. It is by no means a course that specifically teaches you web application penetration testing, but it does cover those topics in pretty good detail just to give you that fundamental knowledge. And the rest of the course I think is just invaluable and learning more about hacking in general. So definitely check that out, but check out the links in the description below for more resources that can be very helpful to you as well. One thing that I do wanna point out in the OWASP top 10 is injection. And we're gonna talk about how this actually could relate to real world scenarios here, but injection can be utilized in any type of form that you see out on the internet. So any type of form that you would fill out where you put your name, your address, or any type of credit card information maybe, these can be exploited in many different ways. Oftentimes you're gonna find that any type of form that you fill out actually talks to a database, maybe a SQL database, and you can exploit this. If we go to the TCM security contact us page, we could see that there's a submit form being used. Now, if I was a malicious hacker, I would go out in Google and I would look up common SQL injection examples or just SQL injection examples. And two results will show up. And I'm gonna point out the two, which are Port Swigger and one from OWASP, just so you can learn more information about how SQL injections are used. But basically what we would do is find some example code and copy it 
and then we would paste it into our submit form and send the message and see what happens. Now, this is a very broad example that I'm giving you and I'm not showing you how to do it because I don't want YouTube to flag this for any reason whatsoever, but I promise you there are a lot of really great examples out there that do exist that you can follow along with so you can learn how to do this. And there are websites out there that exist that let you do this. You don't have to have explicit permission. And again, please do not target any websites out there unless you have explicit permission. So important. Now, this was just a fun way for me to share my experience with you in how I learned how to build websites and how that could also lead to you learning how to hack websites. But maybe that's not interesting to you. Maybe you don't wanna hack websites. You can still learn by viewing the source of other people's code. And that's what makes GitHub the most invaluable resource for any of you out there who are looking to get into IT. There are so many amazing repositories out here that exist for free, for you to look at, for you to download and look at other people's code and learn and understand how they're doing things. And this relates again to anybody looking to get into IT because you're gonna find scripts out there that exist for things like PowerShell and Bash and Python. And you can learn so much just from viewing others source. It's a great way to learn because it will actually help you get more hands-on. Now, the caveat to this is it could make you extremely lazy and make you not learn anything. So I do wanna highlight that. Please, you have to get hands-on with this stuff and hack it. As you're going through code and learning about what these little bits and pieces do, take notes. Take some of those little bits and pieces of code and implement them into your own project and learn how that could be used for what you're doing. I'll put links in the description below for a few different GitHub repositories out there that you can follow along with and learn more information from. But please, again, I cannot stress enough, hack the stuff. Everything that you find out there in a GitHub repository, take bits and pieces from it and learn more about it. Don't just copy somebody's code and call it your own. That's not your own. That's not you learning anything. You need to actually dive into what these little bits and pieces of code are and what they're doing. How does it work? How do these functions operate? It's very important for you to understand that going forward. You'll find the more that you look at these different scripts out there and the code behind them, how these bits and pieces fall into place. It all starts to make sense over the years. Nowadays, you could put any batch script in front of me, any PowerShell script in front of me, almost any Python script in front of me, and I could look through that code and I could have a very general idea of exactly what that script is trying to accomplish. And that's simply from just learning fundamentals of different coding languages and taking a look at different people's source to understand how these things work and operate. So whether you're looking to become a hacker or you're just looking to get into IT at any level, Learning any type of scripting language is going to be extremely valuable for you, as we've said in previous videos just recently, but looking at other people's code can really help take that learning to the next level. So that's all I have for this video. It was just something that I wanted to throw together and share a story and laugh about something with y'all because we need a little bit of laughter and we need some storytelling to make things just more enjoyable. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you want to Check out the links in the description below for everything that I talked about. The resources down there are going to be so valuable for you. So please make like a sponge and absorb as much as you possibly can. As always, take it easy.